now this is the lesion that i wanted to show you so this is the normal stratified squamous epithelium yes as i had shown you what is this layer what is this layer basal very good this is the immature basal layer this is the immature basal layer it is at this layer that is going to allow the virus entry, entry of h okay entry. this is this layer where the virus entry will occur and what are these layers these are the mature, mature layers these are the mature layers and in the mature layers what is what is going to happen the virus site of viral replication replication is going to happen very very good okay very good so this is your normal okay this is your normal now in case of the first precursor lesion that we call it as the l cell what did i tell you see first of all you have to understand that there is a dysplasia okay and what is the meaning of dysplasia where the cells are basically arranged in a disordered fashion they become hyperchromatic see the arrangement of cells over here and see the arrangement of cells over here so there is a dysplastic hyperchromatic cells you can see but they are limited to lower one third less than lower one third okay so less than one third of the epithelium is involved by dysplasia dysplasia disordered arrangement of the cells with hyperchromatic nucleus with hyperchromatic nucleus you can compare it with the normal on the left hand side is this very clear to everyone okay let me just show you another image this is basically your sin2 this is basically your sin2 now in this case of sin2 basically what we are watching that in case of sin2 they are involved more than one third they have involved more than one third but they are less than the less two, than third two third of third. the epithelium okay so this is the entire area of involvement now can you appreciate how the cells are disorganized some of them are like this some of them are like this some of them are like this there is no ordered arrangement and see the cells have increased nuclear size so the nuclear size of the cells have increased yes or no the cells have an increased nuclear size over here they are hyperchromatic so dysplasia limited up till less than 2/3 of the epithelium that is your sin2 and over here see sin3 is both more than 2/3 and carcinoma in situ is when it involves the full thickness okay when it involves the full thickness so as you can see there is a disordered growth with hyperchromatic and large cells which is covering through the entire through and through epithelium is involved okay now i will tell you one thing i will ask you one question why they are called precursor lesion what is the reason that is differentiating them from a carcinoma see this is the basement membrane as you can appreciate okay so there is no invasion there is no invasion till there is no invasion they will be regarded as a precursor lesion okay. okay is it very clear now very simple to understand what is normal what is sin1 also called as l cell and others all of them will come under the umbrella of h cell this all of them will be called as h cell now because the treatment will remain the same what is this this is the cut open section of the uterus yes that we have appreciated over here now what what are these portions these are the fallopian tube plus the ovary part is there okay now along with that what we see over here if you can appreciate normally over here it would have gone somewhat like this normal yes okay. sir but over here do you see any any abnormality exophytic mass yes exhibiting yes, areas sir. of hemorrhage necrosis abnormal irregular mass so this is your invasive invasive exophytic exophytic cervical carcinoma why am i telling you because now can you appreciate over here this is the basement membrane this is the basement membrane and can you see a part of tumor has come out yes so we will say this is the invasion that is occurring this was basically an h cell okay this was an h cell a carcinoma in situ and basically we can appreciate the invasion of the cervical stroma yes everyone can see there is an early invasion okay showing an invasive nest which is breaking through the basement membrane of high grade squamous cell intraepithelial lesion okay h cell 
Today we are going to start with a very important topic. We are going to understand the pre-invasive lesions of the cervix along with cervical carcinoma. So let us begin today's topic of discussion. So as you know, cervical carcinoma, it is the fourth most common cancer found in women and the incidence has been declining because of the pap screening that is already in place okay it effectively detects any kind of precursor lesion so pap screening is basically a cytological screening of the cervix okay it is done to screen any precursor lesions or any invasive lesions of the cervix okay i will discuss in details about the program that is followed in the world as well as in india with regards to pap screening as well now <clears throat> basically if you see the human papilloma virus also abbreviated as the HPV. It is the human papilloma virus. It is implicated in the development of cervical carcinoma. So very important exam uh, question point of view. This HPV virus, it is a DNA virus. Okay. And there are two important types of this human papilloma virus. One is the high risk human papilloma virus. Another one is your low risk human papilloma virus. So among the high risk human papilloma virus, we are having 16, 18 and others. So the high risk HPVs, they are responsible for the causation of cervical carcinoma, cervical carcinoma. So out of all the cases, the HPV 16 is most commonly implicated in the cervical carcinogenesis. It is basically responsible for 60% of the cases. Whereas the HPV 18, if you see, they are responsible for around 10% of the cases of cervical carcinoma, whereas the other high risk types of HPVs are responsible for rest cases of cervical carcinoma. Now, on the other hand, we are having low risk HPV. For example, the low risk HPVs, usually they do not cause any carcinoma, but they cause certain benign lesions. So the low risk HPV 6 and 11, they are responsible for causation of warts in the genital area. We call it as anogenital warts. Okay. Whereas other low risk HPVs like 1, 2, 4 and 7 are responsible for warts in other areas of the body uh, leading to what is called as benign squamous papilloma. So very, very important. You should remember which are the high risk HPVs, which are the low risk HPVs and what are the associated lesions with them. Is this point very clear to everyone? Okay. The different types of HP, uh, HPVs, very, very important. Lot of MCQs are asked from this particular part. Okay. Now increased HPV infection occurs at an early age around 20 to 24 years of age. Okay. The incidence of HPV infection increases. Why do you think at this age increases? Because it is at this age that there is an onset of a sexual activity. So during this initial phases of sexual activity, the incidence of HPV infection is very, very high. Okay. So remember that all of the women who are engaging in sexual activity in this age, most of them, most of the HPV infections that they are going to have in this age, they are transient in nature. Transient means they are going to stay for a small period of time and then they are going to go away on its own. So around 50% of the HPV infections are cleared within eight months of infection. Whereas, and if you see 90% of the infections are completely cleared by two years of age. So basically maximum uh, infections that you see in the early age, they are cleared. 50% of the early infections are cleared by eight months and 90% are cleared by two years of age. Now, remember one thing that among all the HPV infections, the high risk HPV, it takes a much longer time to clear as compared to the other kinds of HPV. Okay. Now, one very important thing is that it is only those infections which are persistent in nature, which, which are very difficult to clear that predisposes to the uh, formation or predisposes to the occurrence of the precursor or pre-invasive lesions and carcinoma. Okay. So is this point very clear to everyone with regards to the HPV infection? Yes. Can we move ahead now? Very important before we start the pre-invasive lesions, okay, the seals and the invasive cervical carcinoma, we have to understand few basic important points as to how the HPV is causing its pathogenesis. So the human papilloma virus pathogenesis, if you see, persistent HPV infection requires the virus entry into the immature basal epithelial cell. So now you must be thinking that, sir, what is the basal epithelial cell? So let, let me just show you one diagram so that you understand this. Okay. What is this that, that I have drawn over here? Yes. What is this? Yes. It is a stratified squamous epithelium. Yes. If everyone understands stratified 
squamous epithelia now the basal layer this is the basal layer if you can appreciate this is the basal layer which is the most immature layer and it is at this side that the hpv virus enters enters the epithelium so it enters the epithelium via the break in the uh, layer of this uh, basal cell layer okay remember it is the basal cell layer which allows entry of the hpv virus okay very very important point so the persistent hpv infection that occurs it requires the entry of the virus into the immature basal epithelial layer okay and the sites which are most vulnerable for such viral entry it is the squamo columnar junction of the cervix it is at this site if you see the incidence of pre invasive and invasive cervical carcinomas is maximum at the squamo columnar junction because it is at this site that tissue repair is taking place site of metaplasia is there so it is so there's a high chance there's a break in the basal epithelium allowing the virus to entry okay now the uh, now why this this is the very very uh, very uh, you know high risk area because it is the area of epithelial trauma as well as epithelial repair as i just mentioned and over here the virus finds very easy access to the immature basal cell layer is this very clear the concept of basal layer cell infiltration okay yes. now what are the other sites that you can have the pre invasive lesions of the cervix along with cervical carcinoma so this squamo columnar junction of the ns okay the squamo columnar junction of the ns the squamous cells of the oropharyngeal tonsillar crypt so not only the cervix and the vagina and the, the genital area is involved but also the anal area ano genital area will be involved and also because of the increased incidence of oral sex the oropharyngeal areas are also showing the invasive cervical carcinoma very very important okay there has been a rise in the levels of oropharyngeal squamous cell carcinoma okay now very important to the pathogenesis of the human papilloma viruses are two important oncoprotein a sure shot exam question will be there E6 and E7 oncoprotein. Now, much about the E6 and E7 oncoprotein, I have already discussed with you all when I had taught you about uh, uh, you know microbial carcinogenesis in the chapter of neoplasia. But I am going to repeat those sections again. So, E6 and E7, these are two important oncoproteins. What are these? They are oncoprotein, and they play a very important role in the carcinogenesis of cervical carcinoma so you must be thinking that how are they playing a role in cervical carcinogenesis let us see now first we are going to discuss about the human papilloma virus e6 oncoprotein what does it do it is stimulating a particular gene called as the tert gene have you do you remember about the tert gene where did we read about the tert gene yes can anyone tell me we had done the chapter on aging if you remember the chapter the cell injury and repair yes sir in the aging chapter i told you that there is a particular gene called as the tert gene which is increasing the release of telomerase enzyme and this telomerase enzyme has a major function of maintaining the ends of the telomere which is the chromosomal end so till the length of the chromosome ends this is the chromosome as i told you at the end there are certain areas called as the telomeres and till the length of the telomere is maintained the cell is not going to age okay so basically who is maintaining the length of this telomere it is the telomerase enzyme which is released by the tert gene so the e6 oncoprotein it is causing excessive release and formation of telomerase so it is causing uncontrolled proliferation it doesn't allow the cell to age clear other important uh, effect of the e6 oncoprotein is that this this e6 oncoprotein is inhibiting the p53 tumor suppressor gene and if you already know it is a tumor suppressor gene it is putting breaks to the cell cycle okay so the function of the tumor suppressor gene is also compromised by the e6 so both these uh, things leads to uncontrolled proliferation of the cell okay now one very important point is that the e6 oncoprotein from a high risk human papilloma virus they have a much higher affinity for p53 than e6 from a low risk hpv so in other words e6 from a high risk hpv will cause more uncontrolled proliferation than e6 from low risk hpv is this clear to everyone okay the second important point over here is the role of e7 oncoprotein 
Now, what does this E7 oncoprotein do? It is inhibiting certain cyclin dependent kinase inhibitor. Now, first try to understand for any cell cycle, you all know what a cell cycle is, okay? For any cell cycle to go forward, they require a set of enzymes called as cyclin dependent kinases. Okay, or cyclin. So there is a complex of cyclin dependent kinase and cyclin. So this is very important for a cell cycle or cell proliferation to continue. Now, normally the cell cycle is regulated by means of certain cells, CDK inhibitors. So there are certain inhibitors of these enzymes also, which is going to inhibit them and put a stop to the cell cycle because our body cannot have uncontrolled proliferation. There is a regulated growth. Whenever growth is required, our body is going to grow then the body will stop growing. So just try to understand that normally it is the cyclin dependent kinase inhibitor, which is putting a stop or which is regulating the cell growth. Okay. So this HPV E7 is inhibiting these cyclin dependent kinase inhibitors. What are the names? We have P21 and P27. So basically inhibition of these cyclin dependent kinase inhibitor increases the amount of CDKs and cyclin. Which CDK? The cyclin dependent kinase for cyclin D complex. So it increases the activity of this leading to excessive, uh, you know, uh, proliferation of the cell. And also the HPV E7 oncoprotein, they are also inhibiting another tumor suppressor gene that is the RB tumor suppressor gene, which is again leading to uncontrolled proliferation of the cell, which is again leading to uncontrolled cell proliferation. Are these point very crystal clear to everyone how E6 and E7 oncoprotein are causing uncontrolled proliferation of the cell? Yes, everyone? Yes, sir. Okay. Now also, just like the E6 oncoprotein, the E7 oncoproteins from the high-risk HPV, they have a higher affinity for RB than the E7 from high-risk HPV. Always remember, just the same. So any high-risk HPV, okay, the oncoproteins from that high-risk HPV will cause more uncontrolled proliferation than the oncoproteins from the low-risk HPV. So just to clear the concept, as I have already explained to you before, that the virus for the entry of the HPV virus, it requires a break in the basal cell layer through which they will infect the immature cell. So viral entry is taking place via the immature basal cells. But remember, the virus is multiplying and the virus is going to replicate in the mature cell layers. Remember, normally, as you go up the stratified squamous epithelium, the epithelium is going to mature. So the most immature layer is the basal layer. And as you move ahead, the epithelium is going to mature. And as the cells are going to mature, as you go up, okay, the amount of viral replication also will increase because the virus starts to divide and replicate inside mature cells. Okay, very, very important. So this is the HPV pathogenesis E6, E7 and certain basic concept that I have explained it to you. Now, there is also something called as the physical state of the virus. So you must be thinking that what is the physical state of the virus? So it is very simple to understand. See, remember, this is the host cell. For example, this is the squamous cell. This is the host squamous cell, both of them. This is also the squamous cell. Now, once the viral, this is the viral DNA, the HPV DNA that has entered and this is the host genome. Okay. So very importantly that the viral DNA, they are not integrated with the host genome in case of the precursor lesions and such form of the virus, which is not integrated is called as extra chromosomal or episomal form of the virus. And this form of the virus where the viral DNA is not integrated with the host genome, it is called as the episomal form and it is classically seen in the precursor lesions of the cervix. That is the h cell and the l cell. Is this point very clear to everyone? Yes. Now, not only this, this is one form of the virus. The other form of the virus is the one where the viral DNA gets integrated into the host genome. So the host genome is the one which is in black and the viral genome is that is, is, is in red. So you can see that there is a integration of the host genome with the viral DNA. And once this integration is there, it leads to an increased expression of E6, E7 oncoprotein and the role of E6, E7 oncoprotein we have already discussed in details, which is leading to what is called as carcinoma. Is this very crystal clear to everyone? Yes. Is it very yes, crystal sir. clear to everyone? The physical state of the virus. Okay. Then we have read about the E6, E7 oncoprotein, how they are, you know, basically causing this particular, you know, carcinoma, how they are participating. Okay. 
Now, one very thing, having said all these things about the HPV infection, having said everything about the HPV infection, even though there is a very high percentage of young women who are infected with HPV in their reproductive years. So, for example, between uh, your, for example, 20 to 45 years of age, okay, in the reproductive age group, for example, if 100 women are infected with HPV, okay, only approximately one to two are going to develop the cancer. All of them will not develop the cancer. So very less amount of those who are infected will finally go on to develop cervical carcinoma. Is this point very clear to everyone? So even though very high percentage of young women are infected with the HPV infection in their reproductive years, only very few are going to develop this cancer. Is this point crystal clear? Yes. Can we move ahead now? So after, so in the background of this basic information that I have already explained to you, I am now going to start with the main topic of today's lecture. That is your in pre-invasive lesions of the cervix, pre-invasive, pre-invasive lesion also called as SIN. That is cervical intraepithelial neoplasia lesion, also called as SIL. That is squamous intraepithelial lesions. Okay. So we will discuss about this in details now. Now, also remember, this is one of your competencies. Please go through your competency book. This is one of your competencies in the National Medical Council, the cervical intraepithelial neoplasia. Okay. Is this very clear? Okay. So what is there in the SIN classification? Let us try and understand that in the SIN classification, in the SYN classification, we are having, we, we used to have mild, moderate and severe dysplasia. So this was the SYN classification that we had seen, mild, moderate, severe and carcinoma in situ. So this is how we used to have the classification system before. So that was the dysplasia or the carcinoma in situ system, wherein there were mild when it involved less than one third of the epithelium moderate when you're more than one third, but less than two third of the epithelium was involved severe when more than two third of the epithelium was involved and carcinoma in situ was full thickness. Okay. Then came the carcinoma in situ, the cervical intraepithelial neoplasia system over here. The mild dysplasia was corresponding to SIN1. Moderate dysplasia was corresponding to SIN2, severe dysplasia was corresponding to SIN3, and carcinoma in situ was corresponding to SIN3 as well. But in today's world, the current classification system is the SIL. SIL stands for squamous cervical intraepithelial, squamous intraepithelial lesion. SIL stands for squamous intraepithelial lesion. Okay. Now, according to the current system, we are just having two classification. Either you are labeled as LCL, that is low risk, that is basically your low grade squamous intraepithelial lesion, or you are graded as HCL. Okay. So anything which is less, which is involving less than one third of the epithelium will be LCL and anything more than one third of the epithelium will be regarded as HCL. Now, can you tell me why from this system that was a four stage system, we came to a three stage system and now we have a two stage system. Can you tell me why we have this two tiered staging system now only L cell and H cell? What is the importance? Yes. See, the importance is because anything which surgical is labeled. Treatment. Yes, tell me. Sir, surgical treatment. Very good. See. L cell, if you are labeled as L cell, the treatment is one type. Okay. And if you are labeled as either moderate, severe or carcinoma in this rest three categories, the treatment is the same. The treatment is the same. You have to go for surgery in H cell. Whereas in case of H cell, L cell, no surgery. You just have to observe. Observation, wait and watch is the treatment of choice for L cell. So basically the treatment of choice for the L cell is observation versus surgical. That is why we are having two system, L cell and we are having H cell. So this is a very important MCQ asked in the AIMS exam. Okay. Very, very that now this two tight system is there. The reason is this. Okay. Okay. Can we move ahead now? Is this clear? The classification system of the cervical, uh, yes, lesions. Okay. Very clear. Okay. Now moving ahead. Now this is the lesion that I wanted to show you. So this is the normal stratified squamous epithelium. Yes. As I had shown you, what is this layer? What is this layer? Basal. Very good. This is the immature basal layer. This is the immature basal layer. 
it is at this layer that is going to allow the virus entry, entry of h okay entry. this is this layer where the virus entry will occur and what are these layers these are the mature, mature layers these are the mature layers and in the mature layers what is what is going to happen the virus site of viral replication replication is going to happen very very good okay very good so this is your normal okay this is your normal now in case of the first precursor lesion that we call it as the l cell what did i tell you see first of all you have to understand that there is a dysplasia okay and what is the meaning of dysplasia where the cells are basically arranged in a disordered fashion they become hyperchromatic see the arrangement of cells over here and see the arrangement of cells over here so there is a dysplastic hyperchromatic cells you can see but they are limited to lower one third less than lower one third okay so less than one third of the epithelium is involved by dysplasia dysplasia disordered arrangement of these cells with hyperchromatic nucleus with hyperchromatic nucleus you can compare it with the normal on the left hand side is this very clear to everyone okay let me just show you another image this is basically your sin2 this is basically your sin2 now in this case of sin2 basically what we are watching that in case of sin2 they are involved more than one third they have involved more than one third but they are less than the less two, than third two third of third. the epithelium okay so this is the entire area of involvement now can you appreciate how the cells are disorganized some of them are like this some of them are like this some of them are like this there is no ordered arrangement and see the cells have increased nuclear size so the nuclear size of the cells have increased yes or no the cells have an increased nuclear size over here they are hyperchromatic so dysplasia limited up till less than 2/3 of the epithelium that is your sin2 and over here see sin3 is both more than 2/3 and carcinoma in situ is when it involves the full thickness okay when it involves the full thickness so as you can see there is a disordered growth with hyperchromatic and large cells which is covering through the entire through and through epithelium is involved okay now i will tell you one thing i will ask you one question why they are called precursor lesion what is the reason that is differentiating them from a carcinoma see this is the basement membrane as you can appreciate okay so there is no invasion there is no invasion till there is no invasion they will be regarded as a precursor lesion okay. okay is it very clear now very simple to understand what is normal what is sin1 also called as l cell and others all of them will come under the umbrella of h cell this all of them will be called as h cell now because the treatment will remain the same okay so can we discuss the important points of l cell so very important points regarding l cell is that it does not progress directly to invasive carcinoma yes sir. for example l cell will not go and directly cause ca cervix they this will not happen okay h cell can do l cell cannot do okay in fact maximum cases of l cell if you see they regress spontaneously they will regress spontaneously okay and very small percentage of l cell they are going to convert into h cell majority are going to regress very very few percentage is going to progress to h cell now what does l cell represent l cell stage represents productive hpv infection in which there is a very high level of viral replication which is taking place in which layer in the mature cell layers but only very mild alterations are seen in the growth of the host cells so for these reasons remember l cell is not treated like a pre malignant lesion so the majority of the cases we go for wait and watch okay we increase the screening we will increase the screening process okay we will increase the screening process is this point very clear to everyone yes sir is this very clear to everyone okay okay now now very importantly the other point that we are going to discuss over here is that If if you are going to see over here, H cell. If you are looking at the H cell, by contrast, if you look at the H cell, uh, L cell, H cell is considered to be at a very high risk for progression into cancer. Very high risk is there for progression into carcinoma. Now in H cell, there is a progressive deregulation of the cell cycle, as we have already said. What deregulation is there? There is increased E six E seven oncoprotein, which is going to cause what? Uncontrolled, uncontrolled cell proliferation. proliferation. Uncontrolled 
cell proliferation will be there which is going to increase the cell proliferation okay there will be arrested epithelial maturation whatever maturation that was going on from the basal to the upper layer that is going to be arrested and there is a lower rate of replication in case of l cell so always remember high rate of viral replication doesn't mean that the particular case will become carcinoma okay see the l cell they are having very high rate of viral replication and the h cell is having a lower rate of viral replication but the progression to carcinoma is completely opposite l cell can progress to carcinoma very very slowly whereas h cell they can do so very swiftly okay now very important that once there is a derangement of the cell cycle in h cell it becomes irreversible it can lead to a fully transformed malignant phenotype okay so this is about your l cell and about your h cell okay clear now very important thing is as i was telling you as i was showing you that how are you saying that there is a dysplasia there is dysplasia mild moderate severe what means what are the feature that are going in favor of a pre malignant lesion so the diagnosis of any kind of precursor lesion precursor lesion they are called as cell okay we are having l cell and we are having h cell okay so the diagnosis of cell is based on the identification of nuclear atp as i told you there is a nuclear enlargement and there is a hyperchromatia and the variation in nuclear size and shape so i have already shown you but i will repeat once again look over here look at the size of the nucleus over here and look at the color and similarly compare the same thing over here compare the same thing over here look at the size of the nucleus over here the size is larger if you see if you compare it over here the size is larger yes or no they are more dark yes or no and they have a more dark coarse granules and their shape and size they are highly pleomorphic some of them are elongated some of them are long so the pleomorphism also has increased if you compare it with the normal cervix normal cervical epithelium okay so this is the basic diagnostic criteria to define dysplasia okay so this you can easily appreciate in the diagram okay now one very important feature that i did not tell you but i will show you what is this called as now if you see over here some of the cells can you see they are having perinuclear halo yes they are having perinuclear halo or clearing yes can you appreciate see it is seen over uh, i think it is seen over here also can you see yes sir there is a perinuclear halo can you appreciate and along with the perinuclear halo look at the nucleus the nucleus is also what the nucleus is enlarged increased in size and they are hyperchromatic so this sort of perinuclear halo along with a nuclear hyperchromatia or abnormal nuclear shape what it is called as it is called as coelocytosis very very important exam concept what is coelocytosis now you will tell me sir look at the normal also they are having perinuclear halo yes or no you will tell me like this but see over here look at the nuclear features the nucleus over here is completely normal there is no problem whatsoever with the nucleus so coelocytosis is not only the perinuclear halo coelocytosis is perinuclear halo along with the nuclear atypia together we are calling it as the peri uh, coelocytosis is the concept of coelocytosis very clear to everyone yes sir so the nuclear changes are often accompanied by perinuclear <laughs> cytoplasmic halos and both these things together this perinuclear vacuoles along with this nuclear change okay they are together are called as coelocytic atypia see i have mentioned over here nuclear alteration associated with perinuclear halo both of these things together they are responsible for coelocytic atypia okay and very important exam question that what is which oncoprotein or which protein encoded by the hpv is responsible for this change it is the e5 it is the hpv encoded e5 oncoprotein which is responsible for the coelocytic atypia will you be able to remember this point recent exam question this year only one exam question has come with regards to this coelocytic atypia and e5 was the answer for the same okay now as i have already told you the grading of the l cell and h cell i have already discussed when are we going to say l cell when the immature squamous cells or the atypical squamous cells are confined to the lower one third of the epithelium it is l cell anything more than the uh, uh, the the lower one third is called as h cell yes so we know about this we have already discussed the classification of the cells 
is this point very clear to everyone can we move yes, ahead sir. now yes sir now the histological features of lcl that means uh, you know that is your coelocytosis is a classical feature of viral replication seen in lcl it is correlating with the hpv replication now as i already have explained to you beforehand only that the highest amount of viral load or the viral replication is seen in the upper half of the endometrium yes we already know this point that it is seen in the upper half of the endometrium uh, upper half of the epithelium not the endometrium it is seen in the upper half of the cervical epithelium where you are having the maturing cells we have already discussed this point yes now i am going to tell you that there are certain markers okay there are certain markers which is going to tell us about the viral rep replication one of them is your ki67 another one is your p16 so both these marker if you see in, in the normal epithelium if you see this is the normal epithelium this is the basal cell in the normal epithelium the ki67 marker will be limited to this basal layer because they are they are maximally proliferating but in case of of invasive lesions or pre invasive lesions okay the ki67 is going to be seen in the upper layers why because the viral replication is taking place in the upper layer okay is this very clear to everyone let me just show this diagram so that it becomes clear now first of all what i want to show you what is this change that we are seeing what is this change called as yes what is this change called as coelocytosis very good coelocytosis what does it indicate it indicates active Re viral replication. replication where it is taking place replication in the upper half mature cells in the upper half okay in the mature cells normally where does the mature the replication take place normally if you say the most actively proliferating cells are the basal cells but in case of hpv infection it becomes your upper maturing layers now how can we prove that how can we prove so if i am doing a particular stain to highlight the hpv dna then the upper layers if you can appreciate they are the ones which are showing maximum hpv dna staining that means maximum amount of replication is taking place in the upper layer in the superficial coelocytes is this very clear is this very yes, clear sir. Okay. now the second important thing the second marker which is basically marking uh, your uh, you know which is the proliferation marker of the superficial layer you can appreciate normally proliferation is just confined in the lower layers but in case of your hpv infection the proliferation has reached the upper layers as well is this very clear and this is basically shown by the ki67 this is basically a mitosis marker it is a marker of mitotic cell division it is a marker of mitotic cell division is this point very clear okay so there is classically what kind of staining over here there is a nuclear staining for ki67 we have a nuclear staining over here as we can appreciate now the second important marker as i told you is the p16 now this marker shows both a staining of the nucleus as well as the cytoplasm okay so this is basically the p16 you can see excessive p16 staining is there in the epithelium both in the nucleus as well as in the cytoplasm both staining seen as a brown staining over here that is a positive p16 staining okay both of these are markers of active hpv viral replication is it very clear now okay clinical features we will see now very very important point over here is that around more than 80% more than 80% of the l cell and around 100% of the h cells they are associated with high risk hpv can you name high risk hpv yes let me see how much strong is your memory what are the high risk hpvs yes 16 and 18 see high 16 and 18 okay and others with hpv 16 if you see it is the most common accounting for around 60 percent of all the carcinoma cases okay although majority of the h cells they are developing from l cells around 20 percent cases of h cells they develop de novo without any l cell stage means normally they are saying l cell first will convert to h cell and then we are going to have cancer okay but normally but sometimes what will happen you will not have an l cell state directly you will get an h cell from where cancer is going to develop now progression to invasive carcinoma when it occurs on an average it takes place over a period of several decades means it takes 
10, 20, 30 years. Now look at this very important natural history. Now, if you look at the L-cell, what did I tell you? Maximum L-cell, 60% of the L-cell is going to regress. 30% is going to persist. And out of this 30%, 10% of this 30% is going to give rise to H-cell. So it's a very low amount. That is why in case of L-cell, the treatment is to go for wait and watch policy. Whereas in case of HCL, if you see 30% only is going to regress, 60% is going to persist. And out of the 60%, 10% is going to go towards carcinoma. That is why you have surgery. to go for surgical options in case of the HCL. Is this concept crystal clear to everyone? 